Hey there, this is Mike with Mana Bluff, and uh, doing a, something a little bit different today. Uh, it's towards the end of the, I guess, Triple Cons season, if you will, and uh, how about some Constructed? Uh, coming off the, the back, I guess, of the GP in Omaha, where it was modern, so I decided I'm going to play some modern, and uh, I'm going to play with... Uh, Karn, duh. Um, and this is pretty much the greatest hand that I, I could have. It's got uh, natural Tron, and uh, why not? Uh, being able to play the Karn Father on turn three seems pretty sweet. Plus, I'm on the draw. Uh, I don't, I don't really know what 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 else. How much more I can say about how sweet this is? Um, Tron. Sure, for those of you that are unfamiliar with it, uh, playing the red-green version, uh, Grove of the Burn Willows, I get, you know, some of those, uh, pyroclasm sweepery type effects, and, uh, green, I can search a bunch of the stuff, or search up lands, do, you know, that silly nonsense. Um, yeah, gonna have some fun. I like making big plays that are somewhat hard to deal with and, uh, fairly easy to execute, so... Let's see if we can get there in this modern daily. Okay, here we go. Uh, lead with a mine, and then a chromatic star. Yeah. I don't know... Oh, I'm so sorry, opponent. Um, I'll gladly crack the star here for uh, Sylvan's Crying, because why not? Uh, I crack it first just so my opponent thinks I could have maybe drawn the other Tron piece and then Sylvan's Crying for like a tower or whatever. And then uh, turn three Karn. It's pretty sweet. Just being able to rip through my deck with these, is, it just feels like I'm cheating. Uh, cheating in the best way possible. Ugh. Yeah, I mean, Treasure Cruise is... We can have our opinions on it. It's fun or not fun, I guess. There's only two options. But, uh, eh. These things are going to happen. Oh, Goblin Guide. That's great. I hate this matchup, because uh, oftentimes it doesn't work out in my favor. Even though... What did I reveal? Relic of Progenitus. That's fine. That's one of the reasons this deck isn't all half bad against... Uh, the deck isn't half bad against uh, Treasure Cruise or Graveyardy type decks, because I'm... I am main decking the hate for them, so. Hmm. Let's see. Um. Sure, let's grab a tower. Because I've got Tron. I already have it, but. Why not grab it anyway? Um. Yeah, these burn decks are just really no fun. I do have the three. I have three main deck Worm Coil Engines, which, if I can get there, it's really sweet and it's hard for them to recover, but. Um, ooh, Swift Spear. Okay. But a lot of the times there's, you know, only so very little I can actually do. Oh, Jetaxian Probe. Gotcha. Um, in this instance, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be playing the Karn and then exiling the Swift Spear because uh, with the types of cards that this deck is going to be playing, yeah, you see, these are the kind of things that it can do a lot more. I mean, not that I think I'm dead, but, you know, Opponent can do a, a lot of damage. Missing the land here was pretty sweet. What revealed? Uh, chromatic star. Or chromatic sphere, rather. Um, exile that. Yes, if my opponent draws. I mean, if there's a bolt, Karn's gone. If there's another land and something else, Karn's gotten, sure but making my opponent spend these valuable plays on killing Karn is what I want to be doing. Ooh, and actually this is pretty good for me, because there's a chance that I even keep uh, the Karn Father around. Uh-huh. Hmm, what could it be? Oh, Pillar. Sure. Yeah, that happens. That is damage that got soaked up. See, now I could be greedy. 
and I am incredibly tempted to be greedy here with this. At 13, I think I can afford to be greedy. Have my opponent play something else. Um, I think to stave off against Treasure Cruise. Oh, well, I guess then there's really no sense in me being greedy here. Uh, especially if I have the two. So let's add red. Pyroclasm. Um, I might as well also Ancient Stirrings. And what do we got? Well, another Karn's pretty sweet. So here we go. I think I'm pretty fairly ahead. And the reason I didn't take the um, Chromatic Spear here, because I know I'm going to be able to play Pyroclasm. I have the Grove or the, the Grove, so I'm not worried. Yep, another Goblin Guide. Sure. Ooh, Ghost Quarter. Okay. Um, the question is, can I play both? I can. Well, let's just lock my opponent out, why don't we? Yeah, that sounds fine to me. Karn. Let's exile that. And Pyroclasm. Alright, can we get the flawless victory? Alright. There's still a little ways, and there's certainly potential for my opponent to be able to kind of, uh, I don't want to say necessarily come back from this, but, um, well, I, I guess that is what I was going for. Uh, oh, that's card. This deck is interesting. It is just a blue-red. I'm going to burn you out and play Treasure Cruise and do some silly things to you. Um... Yeah, there's no sense in me. Alright, keep exiling some stuff. I can Sylvan Scrying for um, I have Ugin and then play Emrakul eventually, or, I mean, honestly, the, the better play is to um, think, uh, what is it, I have Ugin to get more Coil Engines and just put myself that much further ahead. And look, even if I want to do it, I just get to the point where I might even be able to restart the game in two turns. Um, you know, not that I'm gonna do that, but options, options. Um, I did draw fairly sweet. Add a green, and let Sylvan scrying for Eye of Ugin. Play the Eye of Ugin. And I might as well also play a Chromatic Sphere. Uh, because end of my opponent's turn, I just I for seven. Okay, I have seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Which is enough for Emrakul. Because I can discounts it by two, and I might as well just win. Alright, eventful game, flawless victory, I feel. Yep. Oh, if I really wanted the flawless victory, I could exile the Emrakul with my Karn and then restart the game with Emrakul. Ugh. Oh, might as well uh, learn a little bit more from my opponent's deck. Yeah, Vapor Snag is going to be pretty sweet. Maybe side out a couple of those. Um, okay. Yeah, like I said, because this would be able to be the turn where I just restart the game with Emrakul. That would be sweet. I guess probably the better thing to do there would have been to, uh, once again, exile something from my opponent's hand. Just to see something else there. Um, so what do we got in the sideboard? Um, Blue-red... That graveyardy treasure cruise burn deck. Um, actually, the mono red one is much scarier. There was uh, a lot less that my opponent had in this instance than 
so I, I feel like I'm, I'm less worried. Uh, that being said, Worm Coil Engine is one of the, the better things against these decks, just gaining six life even once just puts me so much further ahead. Um, I can easily cut a couple of the Oblivion Stones, just because Pyroclasms will be able to mop up. Unfortunately, that stupid prowess with the uh, Swift Spear is uh, rather unfortunate, because just one... Yeah, it's actually just one um, thing and it goes away. Um, Relic is pretty fine for the Treasure Cruise. Uh, Torpor Orbs, not going to be doing really anything. I can see Spell Skites. Spell Skites will be a decent enough blocker, um, which makes me uh, inclined to actually bring in a couple. Um, uh, maybe even cut one more of the Oblivion Stone. Ah, no, but I really do want Oblivion Stone to be able to it will, mop, like I said, mop up the Swift Spheres. So two is probably good. I want the Pyroclasms just because I'm going to need those effects. Um, Treasure Cruise is going to suck, but I think that might even be the, the least of my worries if I can get to the point where I stabilize. Like Treasure Cruise, all, 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 although good, I feel like those other things are going to kill me faster than just getting the those card advantage type engines going on. So I could see myself cutting a relic. Could be wrong, but I could see myself doing it. Um, Emrakul's actually probably also not even the way to go, because I could just win with the worm coil engines. Uh, it's just exp unnecessarily expensive. Um, yeah, okay, I like that. I've convinced myself that I want to keep the relics and just two spell skites. Uh, let's see where we go from there. Cool. Um, see you game two. All right, on the draw. Um, this hand's actually fine. Ideally, of course, this would be another Tron piece, but, you know, with the two stars plus a you know, way to get more lands and Pyroclasm, it seems like it's pretty sweet. So I am not all that worried. Be... Yep, sure, Goblin Guide. Maybe, hey, maybe this gets me a land. That would be sweet. It did not get me a land. I guess what you're going to do. Um, ideal play here is just duder duder and then I can kill both of them. Of course, duder duders that I can definitely kill. I'm trying to think of ones that there would be that I wouldn't be able to kill. Oh, 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 please play another thing. Please play another thing. Oh, 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 yes. Oh, this is going to be so painful for my opponent. All right, two Goblin Guide triggers. I guess I should open up my, uh... I draw a land? No? Oh, there's another Sylvan Scrying? Oh, that sucks. Chromatic Sphere. Okay. Oh, opponent, this isn't going to be good for you. Oh, you're not going to like this at all. Boom! Oh! Oh, that was so nice. Oh, the yield three for one. Um, I'm still not in a the greatest of positions either. That was a that was a massive attack. Five points on turn two. Serum visions. Huh, not expecting that, but okay. So this is a, these blue red Delverless Delver. Um, I guess I should have prefaced my. Uh, playing this game today with I haven't played Tron in quite a little bit uh, actually even since Cottons was a thing so uh, I'm kind of just winging it with the uh, the new cards here Four. okay let's see what what did my opponent do with the scries Sir vision top top bottom okay hmm I'm tempted to relic just because this would be a sweet cruise. And actually, I think that's what I'm going to do here while my opponent is tapped out and cool. I was going to say, hopefully it draws me into a land. Uh, lead with the Chromatic Sphere. I guess I could have led with a star just in case there's some way that my opponent can destroy um, artifacts so that I draw the card. That's why the star is better than the spheres. Because no matter how it dies, you get the card, whereas with this one, it's part of the cost. Bolt. 
Okay, am I just dead? It's probably a card opponent put on top. Uh huh. All right, let's see it. No, forked bolt. Okay. So I could just be dead. My opponent is gonna have to start drawing some stuff though. Uh, one card in hand. Uh, could it be? Oh. Okay. <laughs> well, I might as well get my opponent to use it. Do you got it? Um, I'm kind of just drawing like a champ. I'm, I'm readily, I will readily admit it. I am drawn out of this like crazy. But geez, I've, like I said, if this was just the straight up mono red deck or even the, the red black one that was of, I guess, the modern past, um, modern of, I don't know, before Cons of Dark here, uh, I'd certainly be dead, but I feel like is it, I'm in an interesting position in that this deck is better overall than the other one, but it lost a lot of points in the matchup against Drun, it feels. It just feels like, granted, sample size incredibly small. Uh, Pillar of Flame. Okay, sure, I can be dead. Am I just dead? Yep. Okay. Well, you had it. Not much I can do there. Still got a lot of burn, so, you know, what are you gonna do? <sighs> okay. Um... On occasion, I bring in Nature's Claims uh, for these kind of matchups, uh, so certainly I feel like I can take out the uh, other Oblivion Stone. The way my opponent's going to play, I'll be a Pyroclasm won't be able to do enough work. Um, one Oblivion Stone just, you know, for giggles. Uh, but I've brought in Nature's Claims. Just that instant speed life gain is is actually quite sweet. Um, and I can, I mean, I can honestly even see it coming in here. Just those extra four points would be really good. I don't think I need it. Game three. All right, here we go, game three. Yes, I most definitely would like to play. Mm, yeah, turn three Tron's pretty sweet. Actually, I mean, even better, turn three Worm Coil Engine. Uh, lead with the map. Pa plant into a uh, map. Next turn, mine into... Into a... Uh, whatever it's called, blah, 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 cracking map to a tower, and then worm coil, and then, you know, opponent, if you kept in those vapor snags, then that's pretty sweet for you. But this will be the game where we'll see how, how, just how well this kind of card, this card performs. Okay. Yay, drew me a land. Boom. Okay. Alright, pass the turn. Alright, so let's see what my opponent has. If they're stuck on lands again. No, guess not. All right, here's the hope and no vapor snag. Because I'll certainly lead with a uh, worm coil engine. Okay, goblin guide, sure. E okay. All right, now here, what we're gonna do is wait for the two triggers to happen. After the first one resolves, if it doesn't net me a card. Okay. Then, what is my revealed card? Expedition map. Now I will crack it to get a tower 
and maybe this trigger will get me a card. And yes, it did. That's pretty cool. Um, yep. All right, well, if there is a vapor snag, I certainly could be dead. I certainly could. But I feel like this will be my one of my better lines, because alternatively I can Karn and I guess get rid of Monetary Swifts here, but then I take four, I go down to nine. Hey, line's pretty sweet. Also, next turn, being able to, um, not Karn, pardon me, uh, Worm Coil Engine plus Spell Skite is going to be pretty decent. Um, oh, sure. Blood Moon, okay. Um, that's fine, actually. Uh, now the question is, is my opponent going to be able to, how much can my opponent do to me next turn? So I want to keep at least one of these up, so two I can crack and pay, so that I don't have to pay life to redirect a spell skite. I think I still do want to attack, because this gains six, my opponent can do five, and then six, seven, eight. If they're all three lightning bolts, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen. Um, sh sure. Spell Skite. And do I want to play another Chromatic Sphere is the question. I think... Yes, I might as well. Just to play as many things out as I can, because that way, and the reason I'm playing the Chromatic Sphere is so that I don't have to pay life to do the redirect of targets. Okay. Oh, interesting. All right. Uh, that is also something I, I honestly just wasn't even thinking of, uh, which <laughs> I should have been. Shows you know where my mind's at. Um, duh, blood moon. Another reason why the um, reasons to to kill enchantments that instant speed one. I don't even. Jeez, that's really sad. I don't even remember the names of the cards. It's a uh, green instant. Uh, destroy an enchantment or artifact, and uh, it's control against for life. Uh, Blood Moon targets. Uh, turn earlier Blood Moon would have been pretty sweet, but I guess on the draw Blood Moon isn't. I, I guess Blood Moon's okay, but I have plenty of ways to deal with it, and like I said, if I'm able to get there anywhere in a relatively quick fashion, I mean, turn 3 Tron is still hard, hard to do. Um, hard for this kind of deck to come back from. Huh, guess we got there. Alright, tier two for the win. See you in round two.